share the gospel of Jesus Christ to uh, all those that hear a voice. You've come here this afternoon because God loved you enough to send preachers this way to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need you to understand tonight that the scripture says it's appointed to man once to die. That means each and every one of us is going to die. And when we die, we must go before the judgment seat of God. We must stand before God and when we do, He's going to judge us. Now people would like to think that God is a loving God. And I will tell you truly, God is a loving God. He loved you enough to give you Jesus Christ. But let me tell you about Jesus Christ. It's not good enough to just know about Jesus. It's not good enough just to go to church. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Many of you out here don't understand why you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. But I want to tell you why you need Him. Psalms tells us that God hates the workers of iniquity. So if you're out here sinning, God hates you. You need to understand that. People today says God's all about love. Yes, God is love, but He hates you if you're a worker of iniquity. It's in Psalms. Look it up. We're out here trying to uh, help you turn the wrath of God and the hatred of God away from you. We want you to turn to God and let God accept you and love you through the blood of Jesus Christ. But in that acceptance, let me tell you about that. People expect God to accept you for the way you are. No, that's, that's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is a God of change. He does not expect you to be the same person you are. He expects you to change. We want you to understand this evening that it's appointed to man wants to die, and when, when you do, you have to go before the judgment seat of Christ. When you stand before God, He's either going to send you to heaven or hell. That's the sad truth. And a lot of people would believe that they're not going to hell. Well, the fact of the matter is, most people are going to hell. But through Jesus Christ, you don't have to go to hell, you can go into heaven. I want you to understand that God created man to walk with Him and to serve Him. To be with Him, to commune with Him, and to talk with Him. But we've perverted what God has created for us. We've decided to serve ourselves and neglect our God. But God still loves you enough that He gave you His Son, Jesus Christ, so that you can be forgiven of your sins. The scripture tells us to be forgiven of your sins, there must be a blood sacrifice. And that blood sacrifice is Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about God this afternoon, a true God, Jehovah God. The scripture says that He is a judge. When you read the scripture, you find out that is His name. Because God will judge you. He will judge each and every one of us. He will judge us to be perfect. Because we've accepted Jesus Christ and we follow the Holy Spirit. And He will judge you to be evil if you're living in sin and if you're living in iniquity. If you're trying to rebel against God. We're out here today because we love you and God loves you. God loved you enough to send us your way. God does not love you enough to accept you for who you are. He's not going to. God wants you to accept Jesus Christ. He wants you to accept Him for who He is. God's not going to meet you where you're at. I've heard preachers say that, that God will meet you where you're at. No, He won't. God wants you to meet Him where He's at. God wants you to go to your knees and look up to Him and ask forgiveness. Forgiveness of your sin. I want you to understand that the Scripture says that God is a judge. Now let me tell you what a judge does. A judge judges you according to the law. And if you've broken the law, he will give a consequence to you. And if you obey the law, you will not have to suffer those consequences. And I will tell you the consequences of breaking God's law. That is hell. But what if you were to stand before God and the devil tried to say that you weren't good enough and pointed out all your sins? What if you had somebody to stand before God for you and witness on your part that you're without sin? Well, that is what Jesus Christ is for. But if you do not know Him, and if you do not repent of your sins, you don't have Him there for you. We're out here this afternoon telling you about Jesus Christ. This is no, this is no little story tale. This is not some children's church or some Sunday school lesson. We're out here trying to tell you the truth of Jesus Christ. People would say this is not a church. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, I disagree. If it was the wrong place and the wrong time, then you would be wherever we are. You would be hearing this message right now. We're spreading this gospel to you this afternoon because God sent us here for you. 
And you need to accept Jesus Christ. But the sad fact is, we learn according to the scripture, that he sends us here to preach. And whether you accept it or not, we're here to preach. And the same gospel we're preaching is what's going to send you to hell. People cling to grace. And they say that grace is going to get you into heaven. Well, I will tell you, those accept Jesus that accept Jesus Christ, yes, grace will get them into heaven. Those that choose not to accept Jesus Christ and decide not to live a holy lifestyle, grace is the very thing that's going to cast you into hell. People will say that God is a God of love. Yes, He's a God of love, but He loves every sinner that's in hell today. He loves every sinner that's there, but He, he sent them to hell anyway. God may love you, but He will send you to hell anyway if you do not accept Jesus Christ. We're not out here to judge or condemn anybody. We're out here to share the gospel with you. God loves you enough to send us your way tonight. We're here because God wants you to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hear this message tonight. Tonight might be your last night. And if you were to die and your life is not sanctified through the blood of Jesus Christ, and the direction of the Holy Spirit, God will judge you and cast you into hell. We're out here this evening, you workers of iniquity, to try to accept, get you to accept the righteousness of God. The scripture says that God is holy and He tells us, Be ye therefore now holy. God wants you to be holy. God wants you to be perfect. There are people out here that would say that nobody is perfect. Well, if nobody is perfect, why would the scripture say to be you now therefore perfect as he is perfect? God does want you to be perfect. And that perfectness only comes through Jesus Christ. Where you may repent of your sins and follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know there's many here that think they're saved. But look at the life you're living. If I were to ask the question right now, how many of you love Jesus? There would be a lot of, say, a lot of people would say, I love Jesus. Well, my response to that would be this. Do your actions reflect your love of Jesus? Are you out here glorifying God this evening? Or are you glorifying the world and glorifying yourself? You're getting ready to go hear some bands tonight and worship some idols. We're not out here trying to ruin your fun. We're out here trying to get you to not bow down to idols and not worship these individuals that are trying to brainwash you. We're out here trying to tell you about Jesus Christ. We're trying to be out here today to tell you about God because God loves you. He loves you so much that He gave His Son, Jesus Christ. But I want you to understand, many out here would know John 3.16 that says, God, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But John 3.15 says, If you do not know Jesus Christ, you're condemned already. I want you to understand this afternoon that the scripture tells us that God hates you. For Psalm says that God hates the workers of iniquity. And if you're working sin, Psalm says that God hates you. And many people would say, God is love. Well, I will tell you, God loves every soul in hell tonight. He loves every soul in hell. But without Jesus Christ, you can't go into heaven. You can't win God's love. People would say, you don't have to earn God's love. God loves you anyway. Well, that's the problem. Too many of you are hanging on to God's love. Yes, God loves you. He loves you enough to give you His Son, Jesus Christ. What more do you want? You can't just keep living your life the way you want to. You think that God should justify you in your lifestyle. No, God will not justify you in your lifestyle. He will not accept you where you are. People say that He's a, a God of love and acceptance. No, He's not a God of love and acceptance. He's a God of love and repentance. The first sermon that Jesus Christ preached according to the Scripture was, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the very same Jesus that you guys would say is all about love. Well, that is true. He loves you so much that He wants you to repent and turn from your ways and turn to Him and follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Many of you think we're foolish tonight preaching. Well, the Scripture says you would say that because it can read you like a book because it's a holy book. The Scripture says that He uses the foolishness of preaching to confound the wise. We're out here tonight because we want you to be wise and understand 
the Holy Bible. We're out here tonight to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not about us. We're not trying to ruin your evening. We're out here because God sent us to tell you about Jesus Christ. Sad fact is many of you are going to go to church tomorrow. You're going to go sit in that same old pew that you sat on Wednesday or Tuesday or Sunday or whenever it was. And you're going to think God's okay with you. The fact of the matter is God is not okay with you if you keep living an unholy lifestyle. He doesn't want you to live this way. Many of you would say, well, my conscience doesn't bother me and I don't think this is right and this is wrong. Well, I want to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says there's something called a reprobate mind. It means you've sinned so much that you don't even know that it's wrong anymore. I've seen this in little children. They tell a lie and they know it's wrong. They tell a lie and they know it's wrong. But after they tell so many lies, they don't know it's wrong anymore. Many of you out here this evening are drinking and getting ready to fornicate and bow down to idols tonight because your conscience has become seared. We're out here trying to awaken you to God once again and let you understand that if you will accept Jesus Christ, He will change your mind. This world has perverted your mind. And I want you to understand, according to Psalms, He hates you for that. Psalms says He hates the workers of iniquity. I've heard people say you're supposed to hate the sin and love the sinner. Well, the problem is you don't hate sin. Second problem is this. God hates you if you're doing sin. But oh, it doesn't have to be that way. God can love you. God can love you. People would say that God's not about hate. Well, I will tell you, if you read Proverbs, it says there are, there are seven things that God hates, and yes, six are an abomination before Him. So God does hate. And yes, He is love. People would say God loves you. Well, here's the fact of the matter. Yes, He loves you. He loved you enough to give you Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for you. But you know what? Just believing that is not going to work. Just hearing that is not going to work. But accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and repenting and turning away from your wicked ways, that will make it work. We're told in the book of Revelations that there's a Lamb book of life. When you accept Jesus Christ, your name is written in that book. There are people that think that once you're saved, you're always saved and you cannot be snatched out of God's hand. Well, I will tell you this, you may not be able to be snatched out of God's hand, but you can jump out of His loving arms. We've all, had, we've all seen children that have been held, and we love those children. We hold on to them tight, but sometimes that child will jump out of your lap. And that's the same thing many sinners like you do. God wants to love you and you, He has you in His embrace. But somewhere along the way, you jumped out of His lap. You, loved, you jumped out of His loving embrace. God does not want you to go to hell. John 3, 15, the verse before the one that we've probably seen on the posters and on the, on, on the uh, uh, light poles, says that if you do not believe Jesus Christ, you're condemned already. Many people would say, you're not supposed to judge, you're judging me. No, we're not judging. We're telling you what the Bible says. Your own heart judges you. And if you feel convicted and you're mad at us, I thank you for that. I thank you for being mad at us. Because that means you're open to the Holy Spirit and He's ministering to your heart. I fear for those that are not mad at us tonight. Those that are hearing this and rejecting it. If you hear this and reject it, then when you stand before God, He's going to say, you remember that day when those preachers were telling you about my son Jesus Christ and you decided not to hear it? And He's going to remind you of that. And you might deny it, but He's going to bring it back to remembrance because the Scripture says that every knee will bow before Him and every tongue will confess. And when you confess before God, He's going to bring it up. And because you chose to reject it, You'll find yourself in hell. There are people out here today that think they're too far gone. I've heard people say, well, I'm going to split hell wide open. Well, I'm going to tell you, you can't split hell wide open. You're just going to go right down there. You're just going to be one of the crowd. But if you accept Jesus Christ, you can be one of the number that go into heaven. The scripture says that broad is the way that leadeth to destruction in hell. But narrow is the way that leads to the kingdom of heaven. And that narrow way is through Jesus Christ 
and living a holy lifestyle. Hear these preachers tonight. Hear this gospel of Jesus Christ. Because you're going to die, and when you stand before God, you're going to have to give a testament of the life you lived. And He's going to judge you. Now, He's not going to compare you to somebody else, because somebody might be out here thinking, well, I'm better than this one, and I'm better than that one. Well, I'm sorry, God's not going to compare you to anybody else. God's going to use His Holy Word to judge you. He's going to use the Holy Bible to judge you. And if you're not living according to the Bible, He's going to exercise judgment on you. And you're going to have to suffer the consequences of the Bible. And those consequences are hell. But not just hell. There are other consequences. Many of you out here tonight are going to be doing all kinds of unholy things. Many people out here tonight are going to be laying down with another individual, committing fornication. And when you do, you're going to be welcoming into yourself some kind of curse or some kind of virus. Or you'll be welcoming to yourself some other individual that may not even care about you. I want you to understand that God loves you. Many of you out here have been perverted by culture. There are people out here today that believe that homosexuality is right. Well, I will tell you, the scripture says that's an abomination. Abomination is as bad as you can get. It's not that God doesn't like homosexuality. It's the fact that God hates homosexuality. And according to the book of Psalms, He hates the workers of homosexuality. It's the fact of the matter. We're not out here giving hate speech. We're out here giving love speech because we want you to know that God hates the things that you do, but He loves you enough to give you Jesus Christ. If you'll accept Jesus Christ and stop that unholy lifestyle, He'll accept you into the kingdom of heaven. We're trying to tell you the right way. Sad fact is, many of you when you were younger, you knew the right way, but you turned from it. Many of you might have grown up in church and heard the preacher preach, but now you've turned from it. Many might even be going to church this week, but the fact of the matter is you need to understand church is not going to get you into heaven. Preachers aren't going to get you into heaven. You or your conscience is not going to get you into heaven. Only Jesus Christ will get you into heaven. There are probably Muslims out here this afternoon that believe that some God named Allah will get you into heaven. Well, I will tell you, Allah is not the true God. Allah is not Jehovah. Jehovah God is the true God. For if you read the Quran, you find out that Allah has no son. Yet our God has a son, the only begotten Son of God, and that is Jesus Christ. So those of you that believe Allah is the same as our God, you haven't read the Scripture. You haven't studied the Word. We're out here today because many of you might try to serve some false prophet or some false savior named Muhammad. I will tell you, it's just another false Christ. He was just another antichrist. We're out here trying to tell you of the true Christ. Now there might be people that say, well, I'm Muslim and I believe in your Jesus. No, you don't believe in my Jesus. You believe in parts of my Jesus. You believe he was a prophet. Well, I will tell you, he was so much more than a prophet. He was the Son of God. We hope that you hear us tonight. Many people would say, do you think you're getting through to anybody just yelling at people? I'm not yelling at you. I'm beckoning to you. I'm trying to send a message to you. If your child was to walk out in front of a car, I hope nobody would say, baby, I love you. Don't get hit by that car. I hope nobody would say that. I hope if your child walked in front of the car, you would scream at them and say, don't get hit by that car. Watch out. We're out here today telling you to watch out. Don't get hit by the judgment of God. Yes, we're out here today. Many people might be thinking that we're hollering at you. No, we're just using amplification so more ears can hear. We just want more people to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us to shout it out on the rooftops. Well, we're doing the best we can tonight. We're out here standing above you trying to tell you about Jesus Christ. It's not to lift us up, but it's to bring you up. To bring you up to where God is, and that is through Jesus Christ and repentance. We hope that you hear us tonight. We pray for you. If anybody needs to talk, we're over here.